Welcome to Latte Firm for a quick reaction video on today's amazing day at the Emirates. Arsenal 3, Manchester United 1. I am so exhausted. I am so happy. I am... Oh, wow, this feeling. I wish I could just bottle it up and just, just keep it for whenever I need it, you know? What a day. Welcome. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, please do drop a like, a video, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Get involved in the chat. Relive the day with me. Um, we're going to talk about the highs and lows and just the, the, the feeling of being at the Emirates today. What a day. What a day, Arsenal fans. Uh, let's start with the team news, of course, that broke before the game. Um, I love the headline as well. We slapped United. Thomas Partey, of course, was injured in the hours before the game. Got a knock in, in training. And, of course, I think the club have commented that it's going to be a few weeks I think there is a second diagnosis due. The Lord only knows how long he's going to be out for. It could be weeks. It could be maybe up to three to four months, depending on the grade of injury, which, of course, would bring Tommy Party back in to the team in time for AFCON in January, uh, a time where we're probably going to miss him for up to a month. But the team was Ramsell in goal, Ben White coming in at right back, Saliba and Gabriel. So good to see Gabriel back in where he belongs, along, alongside William Saliba. Colossal performance from Gabriel today. Man monster. Brilliant. Sinchenko coming in at left back. Declan Rice. Oh, Declan Rice. We're going to talk about Rice in just a second. Rice, Rice, baby. Kai Havertz and Martin Odegaard just ahead of Declan. And Saka Martinelli, the wide men within Ketia up front, who I thought played really well, actually. He didn't score a goal but he was running the channels well, bullying defenders, linking up play. And listen, when he's not scoring goals, you want to see him contributing to team play, and he's done exactly that. So really pleased with that. Didn't really have much to say about the team news as it came out. Obviously disappointed. Thomas Partey was injured. I wanted to see Gabriel back in the starting eleven, and he was. Gabriel played really well. Ben White, you know, the defensive unit just looks so much calmer when they're that back four. Great to see Sinchenko back, not fully fit. Tom Yasu came off the bench, of course, to replace him and thought he did pretty well, to be fair. But Sinchenko really gets us ticking. Declan Rice, we will talk about in just a moment. Kai Havertz keeps getting pelters. You know, it's early days in his Arsenal career, of course, came with a very heavy price tag from Chelsea. I think Kai's in an unfortunate position because he has that sort of connector role where he's almost the sort of pre assister He's playing alongside a left wide forward in Martinelli and Trossard's played there once or twice in pre-season. He's playing alongside Odegaard and behind Eddie Nketiah or Jesus or Trossard. He's had different left backs as well, Tommy Asu, Timber during pre-season and of course Sinchenko today. I think it's going to take a bit of time for Kai just to kind of find his feet, be aware of you know movements and how to sort of anticipate passment, uh, passing and movement from, from his teammates. So yeah, look, be patient with him. He had a great chance today. Um, scuffed the shot. Almost won a penalty. Should have been a penalty. I've just seen the replays on Match of the Day. And I think there's a little bit of contact. And, you know, on another day, another ground, maybe we get that decision. But, uh, yeah, look, he's, he's taking some criticism. I think Fabio Vieira coming off the bench and getting that assist again. Another really impactful performance off the bench from Fabio. Maybe he's going to knock on, on the gaffer's door after the international break that we now lead into to maybe get some game time in that left eight position. But Kai Havertz, unfortunate. Um, but that was a team, and I, you know, I couldn't couldn't knock it. It's as strong as we could have gone. David Raya on the bench, Tommy Asu who came on, Kivior, Jorginho, Smith-Rowe, Reese Nelson. What an impact he had. You know, everybody forgets about Bournemouth, but he came on, brought a real energy, directness, speed. wan I thought, played okay against Martinelli, kept him largely at bay. And Reese Nelson came on and really transformed that. And so, you know, again, another astute substitution from the gaffer. Um, look, what a game. Uh, i got to start by saying, look, it's really annoying that we're conceding first at home. It just makes life so difficult for us. It'd be nice, wouldn't it, to win a game 2-0, 3-0. But it was Marcus Rashford, of course, who got Manchester United off the mark. Um, Christian Eriksen playing a really good ball through, delicious ball. Rashford has taken control of that. He's cut inside. Saliba and Gabriel in a line, almost blocking Ramsdale, who kind of got a hand to the shot, but I thought Rashford did well to finish that. And of course, they went 1-0 up, as they did in the same fixture last year. Um, Rashford wheeling away in front of the Arsenal fans, and it took just 36 seconds, I think, from kickoff. 
control, complete football, you know, pass, 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 ball comes across the edge of the box and who's arriving? Skipper, Erdegaard, who just is finding an act to arrive at the right time with conviction on the edge of the box in dangerous positions and he netted to make it 1-1. And I thought, you know, moments before, you know, it was Havertz who scuffed the chance, Declan Rice had a header that he headed over the bar. It was so important to get level so quickly because it was quite a tense game, quite a tight game. Um, United came to basically sit back and catch us on the break as has been so effective in the past. And look, we play a very high line. We want to take the game to the opposition and we're going to defend really high, high up, high risk, high reward, you know, play that game a hundred times. You probably win it 97, 98 times, but United courts on the break and they look dangerous on the break and it's exactly what they wanted to do. So it was really important that we got back in and got back in quite quickly. And of course we went in at halftime one, one and just on Martin Erdegaard. Everyone who knows knows me and has been following this channel will know that I'm a big fan of Cesc Fabregas and a huge fan of Meza Ozil. And Cesc would take games by the scruff of the neck and come up in important moments and deliver. Meza Ozil, less so, wonderful player on his day, did go missing, of course, on, on certain match days. Erdegaard is reaching Cesc levels. He might even be already there. Um, what he does off the ball, the way he leads the team, the way he dictates tempo. I love the way he sort of ushers the crowd on the relationship he's got with the, the fans at the Emirates is phenomenal. And he's now adding end product to his game. You know, not only just assists and pass and pre-assists, but he's getting on the score sheet and he's arriving in the box at dangerous moments. He's a very clever player. And I'm so pleased that he got the goal. Uh, and at 1-1, you know, you kind of rest and think, right, we take the game to the next level and that's not quite what happened in the second half. In the second half, we came out. It was a, it was quite a tight game. Um, you know, we had control of the game. We were trying to knock on that door, as Declan Rice said after the game in his post-match interview, but we just couldn't find a way through. Had one or two chances. And then Garnacho broke away. Um, Heart-in-mouth moment for Arsenal fans. We all saw him race away. He slotted it past Ramsdale and the little pocket of United fans, you know, waves of celebration. And at that moment, it's a dagger to your heart. You kind of just sat there thinking, oh my God, how have we lost this game and to this lot of all teams? And you're thinking about the pelters you're going to take from your mates. You're thinking about brand management on Twitter and what you're going to tweet after the game. And you're thinking about the journey home and do I leave now? And for those of you who left, Arsenal fans leaving the stadium early, have you not learned from the Bournemouth game last season, from the journey that Mikel has taken us on with this special group of players? You can't leave. I, I appreciate people have journeys home and trains to catch. And some people live further away than others. You know, I get that. But come on. It's a massive game. The VAR comes up on screen. And of course, at that moment, you're praying, you're hoping that something happens in your favor. And of course, we got that moment of relief when the goal was ruled out for offside. And, and then you're thinking, right, 88 minutes or whatever it was on the clock. Maybe we settle for a draw. And then, of course, injury time gets put up. Eight minutes of injury time at the Emirates. That was the, the shot into my veins that I needed, that we needed, that the players needed. It all became a bit pedestrian. Like, yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but Arsenal and Manchester United, both, both sets of players, from around sort of 70 minutes, it was a bit pedestrian pace. Like, there were the players walking with the ball, and it was extraordinarily hot in London, like, unexpectedly so today. But I do wonder if it's just the kind of impact of you know the World Cup that we had last Christmas and the US tours that both of these teams have been on, just the general pace and tenacity and ferocity of the Premier League. Maybe it just kind of caught up with them, but that injury time was just a massive boost and the whole crowd just lifted and Erdegaard was doing his thing again and Declan Rice was like, come on. And of course, we had those eight minutes and then the game swung and it was all about this guy. And it was funny because I normally turn to Yembele, who many of you will know on, on this channel. And I was saying to him all throughout the game, Declan Rice has been a monster today. Absolutely incredible performance from Deckers. Physically so dominant, always wanting the ball, all show, always showing for himself. Physically strong and robust in duels, aerial dominance. There was a first half sliding tackle, which I absolutely loved. He came flying out of nowhere. And he won the ball and took the United player out. And he just got everyone on their feet. And you know what? He deserved that goal. 250 now games in his career at the top level. His first goal for Arsenal. And what a time, what a moment to score it. Mikel Arteta after the game talking about the biggest games and the biggest names. You know, the biggest players arrive and they deliver on these platforms. And ah, oh, what a moment. And you know what? When he's, it's all happened in slow motion in front of me. You know, I sit North Bank lower just behind the goal. 
Saka's floated in the cross. It was like maybe the 12th, 13th, 14th sort of cross corner of the game. And they weren't hugely effective up until that point. It was a deeper one. Declan Rice has brought it down on his chest and he's just smashed it in. Took a deflection, to be fair. There was a question maybe about a foul or a tug from Gabriel on Gabriel, but wheeled away and celebrated with ultimate euphoria with the Arsenal fans. And I just love that spirit of Declan Rice. You know, he saw the game and just thought, you know, enough with this shit. I'm basically going to win this game for Arsenal. And he and he did. He took the game by the he took the game the moment by the scruff of the neck and he smashed it home. And at two one, oh my god, the Emirates was just bouncing. But that wasn't it, because of course he went on to score a third. And you know, United had the ball. They we broke up play. Reese Nelson, you know, won the ball, played it to Fabio Vieira, who played the most exquisite pass into Gabi Jesus, who broke the offside trap beautifully, raced away into the box, sent Diego Dallo on holiday. I think he might even still be sliding across the Emirates turf as we speak. And then he's never scored against Manchester United, which is um, unusual given that he played so many years at City and such a good City. But he slotted home so coolly. And if you look over just behind the goal in the in the blur of Arsenal fans there, I'm in that blue shirt with Wally in row one. Um, and, you know, as Jesus scored, it was just pandemonium. Inside out, upside down, row one, row 15, the works. My head was banging like it was these moments, these days. They're so special, so special. I wish, as I said at the start of this little video, I could just bottle it up and keep it for whenever I I need to be sort of cheered up. I mean, what a day. What a day. Uh, Arsenal tweeted after the game. You know, the post-match celebrations, uh, this might have even been the third goal, I'm not sure, but hang it in the Louvre. I mean, look at this picture. We had so many moments like this last season where we, you know, came back in games or left left games quite late into them to get a, to get a winner. You know, Bournemouth obviously springs to mind. The Villa away win, Jorginho bouncing off Emi Martinez's head. Eddie Nketiah, the late winner against United at home in that 3-2 win. I'm just loving it. I'm loving it. And listen, I don't know where it's going to take us. Like, we might not win the league because Man City are just unbelievable. They are treble winners. They've outspent us again. They're four out of four already. They haven't even sort of, you know, broken a sweat. But these moments, these days, these wins over games like today, it's what you're in football for. So Arsenal fans, what a magnificent day it's been. Wonderful day out at the Emirates. Um, glorious weather, great performance. It could have been so different. We could be sat here tonight reflecting on a 2-1 defeat had that Garnacho goal stood. But Gabriel with his stepping back like Michael Jackson, as all the memes have shown. Wow, wow. And then to go into injury time and two devastating blows for Man United, which was just so sweet. So sweet. Until next time, bye for now. 